that the figure originally we were looking at 900, I think what you said, it now shows that we need to build, on average, on a five-year basis, 801. And based on 801, we have a seven and a half year land supply. The problem that we have faced in the past is that the developers, and I would refer to them as carpet beggars who are coming in, taking advantage of a loophole in the law, were arguing that 4.9, 5.1 was not enough. Appeal inspectors were backing them, I believe, incorrectly, and they were getting that through. They will have a much tougher fight, but we will be fighting them. We will fight them all the way through the courts. We will not accept these inappropriate locations being pushed into those unsustainable locations in this bill. We are here, certainly, Mr. Mayor, we are here to represent our residents and that's what we will continue to do. Thank you for your question. We are almost out of time for questions. Can you get a quick one in, Guy? I'm brief. I'm going to ask the question so you want to ask the environment. Thank you very much, Guy. Um, the Council's analysing a range of information about the usage of Main Learning Library and the impact on residents of the decision taken by the school to use the library space for educational purposes. I encourage users of the Main Learning Library to use the other nearby libraries in Early, Woodley or Winner. The opening hours of those libraries are longer than for the Main Learning Library, so most people should be able to access services in that way. There are also, of course, the online services. Walking Borough Council also part funds bus services by Ready Bus and Keep Mobile. Early Town Council part funds Ready Bus and Early Bus for those who find it difficult to get around. So these services are available to get to other libraries <coughs> if required. We are pleased in Walking that we have bucked national trends and we are seeing increased footfall in our libraries. And we are committed to maintaining a comprehensive and efficient library service after we've vacated the Maiden Alley school site. Thank you. And I'll try that guy next to me. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll ask the chat any questions standing in my name. Is it enough? Yeah, thank you. Uh, John standing up. Um, <coughs> California Country Park was purchased by the council in 1973 and it became designated as a country park in 1980. And whilst there has been periodic capital investment, the basic site infrastructure is in need of refreshment. In addition, the borough population has grown considerably in this period and visitor numbers to our country parks have grown. Looking to the future, it's clear that this trend is set to continue with developers currently building 3,500 new homes right on the edge of the park boundary in Alderfield. Currently, the park infrastructure struggles to accommodate the visitors we get on a busy day, and it's essential that the council makes investment to allow the park to continue to thrive in the future. <coughs> the boardwalk has periodically suffered from incidents of vandalism and we have carried out regular repairs over the years. However, following the most recent incident, a significant amount of rot was discovered in the supporting structure, and consequently, we come to the conclusion that the whole structure has, to come, has come to the end of its life. The Council is currently looking at a number of options with regard to funding, <coughs> with the aim of replacing the <coughs> at the country park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have a supplementary? In the interest of time, I think, Mr Mayor. Well, you do have a couple of minutes, if you want. In that case, I'm interested in your response that you're doing this uh, ahead of development, but I'd like to know how much money is being spent currently on California and why you prioritise that uh, spend for houses that have yet to be built and residents that don't yet exist, and what other priorities you put lower down the order for infrastructure investment. Thank you. Can you um, I can't give you a precise figure at the moment. Um, and uh, a lot of it is uh, clearly developer contributions through SIL and Section 106. So we look at California Country Park alongside the other things to see what, what is prioritised. We have earmarked a significant sum for California Country Park, um, which we aim to carry out works over the next year or so. Um, in addition to that, there's also the, uh, the greenways, the, the, the one that has already been installed, and then phase two of the, the greenway 
will happen this year. The plan for that's on the way. So there's significant developer contributions going into infrastructure of that sort in that area. Thank you very much. Now that's the end of uh, public question time. Um, so if members of the public um, <coughs> wish to leave, by all means do so. I want to go and join the enjoy the fun and have some seats upstairs. So thank you for coming and thank you for your questions. privilege of opening the new maths wing in Embrook School. I have to say that was a, a really, really, really great addition to that school. Um, and um, it was actually opened in conjunction with the old uh, head teacher um, who was there for many years. And that was a great occasion. And a huge, um, a huge vote of confidence um, by this council in that school. Um, so that was a great achievement. So well done to all those behind that. Um, there was also the Wokingham Marathon on the 18th of February. I wish I'd dispel any myth that I ran in it. Um, I did not. Um, but I did, I did fire the starting gun. Um, and I did um, award all the cups to the uh, runners at the end. It was in fact the morning after the ball. I just, was just about awake when I got there. Um, but that's a fantastic, and over 3,000 people turned up um, to run, I think that's fantastic. And they have made, and I'm not quite sure how much yet, um, I, I should find out next week at, a, at, a, at a, an occasion here, um, but they have made a significant contribution towards the Bears charity, so I'm grateful to them for that. I didn't see any of you running there, though. Mm -hmm. I see <laughs> I have to say, I saw Charles Marquette's wife running in it, so she was uh, she was there, and um, she quite surprised me by rushing up to me as I had been starting home and gave me a big kiss. So that was really nice. Um, and then uh, last Saturday, I had the privilege of going to one of my real favourite occasions, and that is the Wokingham Horticulture Society uh, Spring Show. Um, and they do four shows a year, um, and of course it is obviously a, a society of avid gardeners. The um, theme of last Saturday was daffodils. Um, it's a pity my wife couldn't be there due to real health, because she's Welsh, but they did send her an enormous bunch of daffodils home, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. But that is a wonderful little organisation working on for those with green fingers, um, and um, they have made us very welcome. Um, so much so, um, I coughed up £14 and joined which is a bit me, isn't it? Um, and uh, I, know, I think John would just like to make a brief statement about Phoenix Avenue, and then I'm going to call Mr Pitts to the, uh, to the front here, and I have uh, a little presentation for you. John. Oh, th thank you, Mayor. I do sorry. Oh, Use this one. Thank you, Miss Smith. Hang on, hang on. Come here, stand up. Um, I'd just like to say, everybody, I, I attended uh, Phoenix Avenue last Friday, um, which is the first of Barry Brooks' six, uh, affordable homes, 68 homes. Um, it was supported very well by members, members from all party, and it, it was obviously so important the Prime Minister turned up and cut the ribbon. So um, it was very nice to see us delivering affordable homes and I hope we're going to deliver a lot more. Thank you very much, John. Um, and now Mr Pitts. Is Mr Pitts here? He used to be the mayor, he used to sit here. Now this is an album and uh, this is the history of the, uh, 
the mayor's year when Mr. Pitts was uh, in power. It's very, very beautifully done, Bob. It's a fantastic momentum. There's even a photograph of me in here. Many congratulations, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you, Bob. I hope you do need one as well. <laughs>
Go on. You do. Get your hands up. Titled Tackle Traffic Congestion in Specific Areas of the Borough. <laughs> Almost a, a hopeless task. And a large amount of this is within Councillor Lee's portfolio, dealing with strategic highways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he will cover a lot of the strategic objectives documented on page 43. Having said that, there is a lot of work to do with what I call the day to day running of the highways, I mean, <coughs> my portfolio. The major activity of last year was the implementation of civil parking enforcement, or CPE, or decriminalisation, etc. We were amongst the last remaining few authorities who relied on the police to enforce our parking restrictions. However, we were fully aware that their dwindling resources meant that this duty was being pushed further and further down their priority list, and had all but dried up, with virtually no enforcement being carried out. With the legal authority to enforce shifting from the police to the council, we now have the control we lacked before. <coughs> the role of the traffic warden has been taken up by an external company who have been highly active. Whilst it is early days, 
and we are still learning as it is a new experience for all of us including residents there's been a marked reduction in antisocial parking unfortunately there is always a downside to such an improvement with an increasing number of complaints and appeals against a penalty charge notice or called what they call a PCM it does raise the question of what is happening here absolutely nothing has changed no change on any restrictions on any road or any car park or even on any residence parking there but the complaint is usually along the lines of well I always park there in the evening even though I just have a yellow line I never got a ticket it's clear that with better enforcement then these residents are more likely to get caught. So their belief that it was perfectly legal to park on those double yellow lines because it was in the evening was incorrect. It was illegal, but without enforcement, they were not caught. This is just one of the conundrums that the move to CPE has caused. Moving forward, we will gather all these stories and use them to review how things are working next year. Next year, we'll also see an increasing liaison with local towns and parishes about specific and point areas of congestion and specifically parking issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lindsay, do you want to speak now? Thank you. Uh, my comments are in two parts. The existing document, which it says our council plan, well, we had no involvement, no, no consultation, no anything about it, so we should be voting against the existing uh, documentation. However, I will listen to Charlotte's comments about moving forward and if there is consultation, true consultation, we will be proactive and we will involve ourselves in that because it, this is an important issue for the council when we move forward. We are where we are but I want to make sure that all parties have an opportunity, that's all 54 of us, have an opportunity to input into the future council plan and it sounds like there's going to be some opportunity on that. And if that happens, I sh we shall be constructive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mark as well. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, before you start my time, could I just ask for a little request later on in the agenda? Um, it's members' question time. Um, we've got an answer to a question I'm going to be asked. And I've got a bit of support up in the gallery there that is of the younger fraternity and I'm just a bit yeah you're right <laughs> and we've, we've misjudged the time so I just wondered if you wouldn't mind after this item to bring forward uh, 91.2 uh, as a member question so I'll, I'll get you to think about that while I'm doing my bit please um, right um, I want to highlight four actions from my portfolio of children's services in the council plan um, because your Worship, action speaks louder than words, and these are actions. Um, our vision for education, we're, we're developing this strategically via a Woking and Learning Partnership, which has been set up, WLP. Um, this involves a partnership with schools, further education colleges, and us, the local authority. And we've enhanced the membership, looking to have representation from small and medium businesses. And also, Her Majesty's Inspectorate, to get a little bit of uh, inside information. And we're reviewing how best to hear the voice of our children and young people. Great example tonight, and we're going to have another one soon in the gallery. Um, my own personal mission, um, and an independent chair is in the process of being recruited to the WLP. Um, number two, our, our Special Educational Needs and Disability Strategy, North 25 years. Um, this is a statutory requirement and it's our responsibility to bring together all the local public services and other stakeholders to support working together to help our young children and young people achieve the best possible outcomes. We have a draft strategy that has been out to consultation which closed literally at the end of last week. And after collating the responses and amending the report, I'm going to take this to executive later this year. Number three, um, our review of resource bases for pupil with special pupils with special educational needs. Um, highlighting and enhancing our wonderful resource bases, Addington School in Woodley, which has just achieved an outstanding for the third consecutive Ofsted inspection. And Foundry College in Norris, who under the inspiring leadership of Jay Blundell, 
has just achieved a good, which is unbelievable, given the huge, huge challenges of their cohort. This is a review designed to build on our Nought 25 years special educational needs and disabilities strategy by consultation on our mainstream school-based resource basis and associated support services. I know that families rely on the resource basis to provide inclusive education so their children can attend a mainstream school. It's important that we get this right so as many children as possible can attend a borough school. Despite the resource constraints we must all work under, we believe that these changes can really help families in making our local services more effective so fewer children need to be educated in schools out of the borough. And last but not least, our foster carer recruitment, my favourite subject, we've designed and implemented a unique in-house placement strategy so that our successes in recruiting foster carers has resulted in 97% of children and young people coming into care being placed locally so far in 2017-18, enabling them to remain and thrive within their own communities. Thank you, Your Worship. And you've certainly got some activity up here looking at the... Uh, oh, you right. certainly have. Thank you. We'll be back shortly. Okay. Um, who's next to speak on this item? It's uh, Julian McKee Summer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Are we not um, adhering to Mark's request, or should you like me to proceed? No. After this one? No, we, okay. No, we finished with the previous corner. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Uh, much has been said this evening about how the Council communicates with what is the most important part of our borough, our residents. We have listened to our residents and what would make contacting us easier, and as a result, we've redesigned our website to ensure the content <coughs> is accessible via mobile devices and that our information is easy to find and to use. We are committed to ensuring that our residents are able to access council services quickly and in a manner most convenient to them. We are moving more of our services online and increasing the number of customers and increasingly the number of customers are using our web chat facility whilst using the council website, enhancing their experiences with advisors and responding quickly to their inquiries. We now offer a number of services which are handled online, such as land charges, disabled parking badges and school admissions applications, but we will continue to provide okay, services that should... I was hoping for a round of applause, but I've got half one. Can you finish it? Jolly Catherine. Who's in the bill for living? Disabled Parking School Division. So we continue to provide our services at Shoe 10 for those who may not uh, be able to access web based uh, uh, services on the internet. By upskilling our customer services teams, including the technology they can access, enables them to deal with a larger number of inquiries at the first point of contact. As we continue to face a challenging financial future, we will continue to lobby against the un unjust negative risk of residential support, resident support grant that has been proposed by central government and have already met with MPs and ministers to coordinate these efforts to ensure WBC receives a sustainable financial settlement. In order to be a more com commercial and responsible for our own destiny, we will continue to campaign to keep local taxes local. We will also identify opportunities and acquisitions to invest in in order to provide an income for this council over and above the rate of the borrowing. We will use this return to fund our capital, use our council services in the future. In 2018-19 we will build the capacity and the capability in an area to begin to build our 100 million commercial property portfolio. Woking Housing Limited has already returned £700,000 to the general fund. Feedback we received from our customers attending our Meet the Council events show that we are meeting or exceeding their expectations two thirds of the time and feedback is particularly positive in areas such as our willingness to help and how easy it is for customers to communicate with us. We adopted a revised statement of community involvement that can communicate with our residents and get involved in the planning process. We will become closer to becoming a self-sufficient council funded by our council tax, business rates and other income as the years progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Stuart Munro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just really wanted to add a little bit to Luke's uh, excellent wrap up of stuff that really we generated to talk a little bit about economic development and business engagement. Um, on, the, on the economic development side, I think our success is really 
are the 60 plus opportunities in new jobs and apprenticeships that we've created. Uh, the City Deal funding helped by the Elevate program for 51 of those apprenticeships and 177 jobs, so it's a job there. Uh, and I think, as my colleague just mentioned, uh, an investment portfolio <coughs> to, uh, to, to help us become more self-sufficient. Um, we'll continue to implement the City, the city Deal uh, as we continue to help the young people and assist in local employment and training. We'll also support our local businesses by continuing to work with the Thames Valley Berkshire Local Enterprise Partnership to drive growth, ensuring that the infrastructure needs to borrow are recognised in all strategic plans and bits of funding. Um, we've also undertaken extensive business engagement, which is new uh, in the last six months, uh, including uh, engagement with the Federation Small Business Event and running a Business World Cafe tomorrow with some of the biggest local employers uh, and hoping that that will be a success tomorrow with ongoing regeneration of the town centre and discussing with them what that means. So, we are becoming very engaged with the business and developing uh, funding streams via, via the cashier services and I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have now Councillor Richard Dolinsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's frustrating that I've only got three minutes uh, to speak. <laughs> We're on target to deliver 500 new affordable homes, homes that also meet the most complex of needs, including those who have been made homeless. We continue to be a good landlord and we meet our regulatory requirements. On commitment, uh, our commitment to provide specialist housing for our residents is evident by the opening of <coughs> the new uh, extra care homes. On health, Working Borough Council is a top performing council for getting people from hospital to their homes, thus preventing bed blocking. On our community mental health team is rated good and our all person mental health service is related is rated outstanding. Also, we have linked work programmes and pathways to community health and social care services so that vulnerable patients can benefit from physical and social activities. Now, there, um, um, we continue to work with our housing companies and our housing association partners to deliver even more affordable housing to meet the needs of the local community, including specialist housing for vulnerable people. We will continue to use the Better Care Fund to improve the outcomes and reduce hospital stays for lending and integrated health and social care services. We, increased, uh, we, we will increase the number of people uh, that we helped to maintain living at home after a period of reablement. And a key action is the continued work with our health care partners to improve services by development of an integrated health and social care program. We will continue to improve opportunity for carers in our community including uh, mental health support. Working Borough has an aging population and therefore, just checking the time, and therefore <laughs> our health partners will ensure a high quality service including supporting the needs of people with dementia. Partnerships that are central to the new council plan where there is opportunity, we will be working on ways to develop the local community and the voluntary sector to improve residents' health and well-being. These may not be headlining grabbing promises, but they will make a difference to the many of our residents. As for the wider council plan, it can be best summarised as realistic, responsible, achievable, and above all, for the benefit of its residents and businesses. <laughs> And we have Norman Jorgensen. Thank you very much. Within the Environment, Sports, Leisure and Libraries portfolio, we're addressing Council's <coughs> principles and priorities, including vibrant communities, health, well-being, quality of life, and maintaining and improving waste collection and recycling. Waste collection is one of the services provided by the Council that most residents use, and I believe most people support what we are doing on recycling and wish to do their bit to help. To that end, we've recently added the collection of a wider range of plastics, foil and cartons from the Kepp site. We also recently announced that from April 2019, we will add a weekly collection of food waste. 
We're encouraging the greater use of the glass ring lamps dotted around the borough and we wish to have more in new locations. All of this puts us on track with our aim of achieving 50% recycling by the end of 2020. During the last year, we've opened new 3G artificial surface football pitches at Arborfield Green and Lyers Green, the tennis courts and the pavilion at Cantley Park. During the next year, we plan to add a 3G pitch at Embrook School for use by the school and the local community. As you've heard in my answers to questions earlier this evening, we're also planning to significantly improve the facilities at California Country Park. We've installed a greenway building <coughs> Arborfield Green with Finchelstead, and the second phase of the greenway construction in that area is underway. In this way, we plan to provide an alternative to cars for some journeys and open up areas for recreational walking, cycling, and horse riding. We've recently awarded a new contract for the management of our leisure centres and look forward to working with the new operator, Places for People, improving the offering and getting even more people active in the borough. We're rebuilding the leisure facilities at Ryers Green and we'll open the new building in the summer. There'll be a four-court hall, gym, studio, new changing rooms and a community room with kitchen, adding to the new 3G pitch that's already there. The other project just commenced is the building of the new leisure centre at Bullmarsh. The planning application is due to be submitted soon, with demolition of the old centre during the summer. <coughs> Excuse me. The new centre will be a substantial improvement on the current one, both in terms of condition and in what it offers. Six-lane swimming pool, teaching pool with a movable floor, so adults and toddlers can be accommodated at different times, a four-lane <coughs> sports hall, a gym and a cafe. Once the Gromer Centre is open, we'll replace the Carnival Pool, as Philip has already mentioned. So I'm happy to support the capital plan. Thank you. <coughs> Pro, um, we're almost out of time, but as it's you, I'll give you two minutes. Thank you. I don't need two minutes, Mr Chairman. Um, I would like to thank every member of the Conservatives who have spoken for telling us everything they have ever done um, in this council and how wonderful it all is. One might almost think they were trying to talk out getting to the motions um, because they don't want to debate Elms Field. Uh, however, they have given us uh, two, two agenda items for the price of one because I believe we have now heard everything that any executive member could ever say and therefore we won't require <laughs> item 89. Um, in fact, I might almost go as far as to say that everything appears to be so wonderful and everything that the council has ever done uh, but I'm surprised we need another council plan because there can't be anything left to do. Thank you very much. I won't go over all, all the amazing things. Thank you. Right. I won't go over those, but what I would say is those words that I must not utter about what type of council we are, but with careful management, and an excellent officer team, we have achieved a perfect history, and we look forward to a great future. But if you look at page 49, you will see the amount of money being spent. It's half a billion pounds. Now, what I can't find, what I cannot understand tonight, is why the opposition would not support this. Now, they say they're not supporting this because they haven't been involved. Well, let me remind everybody here tonight, tomorrow we have the second of our uh, advisory, highway advisory group, uh, with residents and members who want to come along to that and an officer and we discuss plans and ideas that they have. We also have a member group, a highway member group, upon which Rochelle sits and I believe Lindsay sits. So I can't understand how somebody can say, I cannot support... Point of order, I talking cannot about support. the production of this council plan, which says our council plan there was absolutely no involvement and I spoke to Charlotte beforehand to say I was very disappointed that over the preceding few weeks there wasn't any opportunity to have any discussion on what was produced and that is what I am talking about. I do accept that there are working groups and that it, I have to say it is improved over the last few months but that is the, the comment I'm making is about the lack of involvement in the document that's produced this evening. Right, so may I continue briefly? Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, I will wrap up. But again, I come back to the point, how can you not agree with spending 83 million to help residents acquire quality homes? 
how can you not agree with spending 45, 49 million on education and 156 million on highways and bridges? How can you not agree with that? Possibly there was not the uh, involvement that the opposition would have wanted, but it's a bit like saying, if you want a pint of beer, but well, you didn't ask me what type, so I'm certainly not taking it. So I would recommend that we approve this plan, and I would hope in the future that we might have some more support from the opposition. Thank you very much. I think it's all been said. And, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. But just, just to recommend the, the report as written uh, in the agenda tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And on that note, the recommendation is on page 27 of the agenda. Um, two recommendations. Can I see those in favour, please? Please show. Any against? Motion is carried. Now, we have been asked to bring forward item 91. And after some uh, debate here, I'm happy to do that, but we do need a proposal. So, would something like to propose to bring forward of 91? Was that Alison? Yeah, and a seconder? Yes. Okay, those in favour? Okay. So I move to item 91. Uh, I think there is a specific question um, involving some of the other people in the gallery. So uh, I believe is this question and answer today. So Lennox, would you like to ask that question so we can allow the other to go? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, for taking this question early as I'm sure all the people in this chamber would not wish too many students to fall asleep at the school bar. <laughs> Say nothing of the members. <laughs> Could the Executive Member for Children's Services uh, tell the Council about the borough's competitive primary schools football competitions set up over the last four years and their successes? Thank you. And that would be that question, I guess. Thank you, Councillor Ross, for your question. It will be my pleasure to tell you that the Wokingham District Primary Schools Football Association was set up four years ago to introduce competitive football in Wokingham schools. 36 primary schools in Wokingham are involved, and this has allowed us to host competitive leagues before and after Christmas. We hold five annual tournaments at the Medeski Stadium in partnership with Reading FC, and the league and tournaments expose thousands of Wokingham children to football every year. Our crowning achievement is that the Wokingham District under 11s team for our primary schools, we select the best 11 children they go on to represent Wokingham for a year and they travel the south of England playing in a variety of leagues and this season they will win the oldest and most prestigious league that the FA run in the UK and that's with one game to go and they're here tonight <laughs> up in the gallery and the other thing is they're going in June they're going up to Liverpool uh, to represent the south of England in the national finals and so thanks for coming boys and the coaches, uh, Jack and, and Philip. Um, and I look forward to you bringing the trophy back down south. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ross, this is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, Bow Hunt, you know, the school's under 13s girls football team are edging closer to Wembley, believe it or not. Uh, this team are in the midst of a fantastic season and are just one round away from reaching the prestigious London venue of Wembley. They've, um, they've had an incredible 10 games back to back without losing and scored. 48 goals, conceding just two. That's the Bohunt under-13s girls team. 
Thank you. Round of applause. question. You're absolutely correct about the improved degree of enforcement of parking restrictions, basically shining the spotlight on new issues. When the police were the only authority to enforce parking restrictions, uh, including those associated with residence permits restrictions, everyone, including the permit holders themselves, ignored them at times. Now some of them are getting penalty charge notices for things they have done on a regular basis, although prohibited as we now have better enforcement. As a direct result, a root and branch review of the whole residence parking permit scheme has been commissioned by myself to address these new issues. This was last carried out in 2011, also by myself, when I had this role before. The target is that within the next few weeks, all current permit holders will be consulted on a series of permit options to include in a future scheme. It will not change the current formulaic approach to deciding whether a road can have a permit scheme, but will add, seek to add extra options to cater for some, if not all of the categories you mentioned in your question. The output of that consultation will inform the proposals for a new resident parking scheme. In a few cases, it might also trigger a separate re-evaluation of all the parking spaces in a particular road, but one is not dependent on the other. Do we have a supplement on that? I do. Uh, can you confirm, please, when looking at ways to overcome this problem, that the expectations of residents in Wokingham Town Centre, which is partly my ward, are balanced against the need to provide adequate free on-road short-term parking spaces for shoppers? In a simple word, yes. Thank you very much. Ian Pittock, have a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This question is for the Executive Member for Children's Services. I asked the question in my name, which is about boat and admission numbers having been increased above those plan. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for your question, Councillor Pittock. Um, an interesting question from a councillor who only a year ago had um, the executive responsibility for Bohunt School um, before giving up that responsibility to join the opposition. Um, as you well know, the council's intention was to establish a, a 1,200 place, 11 to 18 school, which implies an admission number in the order of 180 places. The increased admission number, which means the capacity will be required for the planned 11 to 16 role, has been set by the school itself. Bohunt Wokingham School is an academy, and as such, has an own admission authority school, is an own admission authority school responsible for setting its own admission number. National policy supports 